How did you find your career? Oh, how I honestly got into that? Oh, wow. That was a midnight one click on a job search uh, profile I had. It was uh, Indeed, actually. <laughs> Just hit the one click and I was automatically signed up for the position and I got a call about a week and a half later, two weeks later, and asked if I was interested in the position. And I didn't think I was ever going to be a teacher. So I was a little hesitant, honestly. Um, although I've been working construction for years, but still, it's been a challenge, something I've never really come across, challenge different than construction itself. You know, teaching people from construction, their bottom of the barrel, you know, I always joke around about that, but um, the kids are, they're, they like to test boundaries and they're definitely used to pushing a little bit more than say somebody that's looking for gainful employment. So, um, it's had its challenges there, but I feel like I can meet them on their level because I was that kid in school. You know, I was the rough one that would uh, challenge the teachers and push boundaries and see how far we could take it. You know, my teacher would tell me, you're going to pay for this somehow, you know, whether it's your kids or whether it's you later. They even told me, you're probably going to end up teaching someday, and I didn't believe them. Definitely didn't. No way. <laughs> but here we are. What do you want for your students? It's building, building a lot of trust with them. Um, that's what I think is the most important. That's what I'm learning is most important with them, for them to be able to trust and confide in me. Um, like telling me, hey, I've got your back as long as you've got mine, and you know, having my back is you showing up to class and you doing what you're supposed to be doing and taking care of what you need to. Uh, so they trust that I'll show up and I will teach them correctly, you know, the things that they're learning and they're there to learn. Some of them aren't really interested in learning what they're there to learn until you approach it with a different, from a different angle, something they can relate to, then it changes their perspective completely. What was it like growing up in a small town? Rough, really rough. Um, reservation town at that, you know, so there was fights all the time. It was a very, very physical town growing up, um, very prejudice, uh, didn't know, did not know how racist we were until I got older and you know, it was always, oh, don't act like this, don't act, don't act white, don't act like a man, you know, don't, and the, the Native American have a really strong sense of pride. <clears throat> so that carried over into my adulthood and unbeknownst to me, like I said, I'm ignorant to the whole thing, just oblivious to it. Um, so it was, it was challenging. And again, uh, there was no life outside of Chiloquin. That was, that was it. So to open your eyes and get a little bit older, I, thought that, well, maybe there is something outside of here. So did some traveling after I figured out there was life outside of Chiloquin. Decided, hey, better go check out the world a little bit. What are some things that you wish people knew about the work that you do? Um, I wish people would understand that it takes a pretty diverse background to be an educator. I feel like it does because, again, you have to reach people on their level and they're not the same. You can't generalize this, the students, you know, when you say the students, they're, they are the students, but they're each individuals and you've got to be flexible and be able to say, hey, I can learn from you, you can learn from me, you know, and uh, engage them where they're at, meet them where they're at, no matter where it's at. You know, you don't know what they're going through in life. You don't know what their parents are going through. You don't know if they even have parents, um, so. The flexibility, uh, um, and it is something that is, it seems to be rigorous. You've, you've got to really dedicate yourself to it because it's not a nine to five job. You don't just drop it at, at the door, you know. You take it home with you, you feel it, you think about it, you think about how you can help these students and how you can actually improve yourself to help them, to better them, you know, better yourself to better your students. It's, it's, a, it's a lot. How would you describe your career journey? Oh, there's quite a bit. Um, I've worked for the uh, Department of Interior as a carpenter, framer. Um, I've worked personally running construction crews companies um, as a janitor, um, as security. Um, I've worked as a field hand, a tractor driver, uh, so many different, different positions I've held. Um, and still, you know, I still have a contracting company 
and we're, we try to develop properties and looking into the tiny house. I want to have a, a, build, a company that specializes in building tiny homes, you know, for the community to donate and for obviously for profit and to job placement and things like that. Um, and community outreach, do a lot of community outreach. And I always have done that, uh, whether it be volunteering for the fire department, volunteering for the ambulance. Um, I think I've only been paid for fire and ambulance a few months out of the 12, 13 years I've been a volunteer. Um, you know, and that takes a lot too. It's, it's not that easy to see some of the things that you see being a uh, volunteer in the ambulance and fire department, but. What do you love about the work that you do? Um, I love the fact that I'm good at uh, construction. <laughs> You know, I'm damn good at what I do. <laughs> and being a teacher, when you do construction, you, you automatically have to teach, like I said, bottom of the barrel, uh, the, the crews. But being able to teach students, I, I do love that. And I love the challenge of meeting them on their level and engaging them. And, uh, you know, I continue to push them, to push and push until they, they push back and in a positive way, you know. Um, because some of them are used to just going and walking through the classroom and sitting in there and not doing anything. Um, and I told them, that's not my class. You've got to participate in my class. And they come in with a bad attitude and they can't, you know, say they're not going to do this, not going to do that, and they don't have to do this or that. And I told oh, you can leave. And most of them will choose to stay because they want to pass. They want to get the passing grade, but you can't just fly through my class. You know, you have to do it. And by the end, They've all been smiling, laughing, and telling me, you know, you're a great teacher and I appreciate you, which is what I strive for, you know. So I really, I really don't take that for granted. It's, it's something awesome every day. That it changes every day. Do you have any advice for students who are trying to find their way? <laughs> I don't know if I'm one to give career advice. <laughs> uh, I, I've held so many positions. Um, a person told me once that I have no longevity, you know, in a position, but you know, I told her I have experience. So I believe that getting experience will help you no matter what you do. That's the only advice that I have is, you know, I wouldn't say stick with one thing all your life because I know many people that have stuck with one thing all their life and they get great at it and then they just cut, cut corners after a while and, you know, they're they lose the zeal. They, it's not fun for them anymore. It becomes a, a job, not a passion. You know, if you're passionate about something, you've heard it a million times. You know, if you love your job, then it's not a job. It's, you know, it's passion. And they're all work. Every job's a job to me. Um, but I'm passionate about every one of them. It doesn't matter if I'm a field hand or a security officer or a teacher. You know, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability and enjoy every minute of it, you know. What sort of students might be drawn to the profession? Um, personable people, you know, definitely got to be. You can be reserved, but yet you got to be a little outspoken. Um, some of the more reserved people are. I see they have a difficult time teaching. Um, in the CT program, the one I'm in particularly, with a charter school, the students are a little rough around the edges sometimes. So they, oh, how do you say it? On the streets, you, you know Mark. You can spot a bark a mile away, and they'll pick on your ass all day, you know? So. You don't want to. You don't want to go to work and get picked on by some kids because they know how to play you. <laughs> um, yeah, you got to be real, um, especially nowadays. Kids are a little different than they were 20 years ago. Even when I was in school, you know, they're a lot different, and the whole being formal and all that stuff's out the window. Kids do what the hell they want, whenever the, they want, and they act like that. You know, they're entitled. Uh, so to be able to put them in their place and yet do it soft enough to where they're still going to want to learn from you is a it's a definitely a task uh, it's something that you've, you've got to work on doing so you can't just present something to the class and they learn it you know you've got to again engage and meet them there and antagonize them a little bit but you've got to make them want to learn something you know can you describe your career journey uh, it'd be hard to sum up my career journey honestly it's, it's been it's been extensive, you know. It's been a lot of bad choices, a lot of a lot of good choices, but more so a lot of bad choices, you know. And I feel like they've had a positive outcome. Luckily, I ended up where I'm at, and you know I have the opportunity, and I do believe it is an opportunity to be an educator, because I've got a diverse background, and I can reach. I feel I can reach much more students, many more students with a diverse background. 
um, having a similar background to some of them or them to me. Um, my career journeys have been anything from digging dirt to <clears throat> working working at one of the wonders, you know, seven wonders of the world. So it's, it's nonstop. And I, I guess I can't sum it up because I'm still going. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's really, a, it's an interesting question. It's a tough question. I could sit here and list off all the jobs I've had, but I don't know if that'll do it any justice. It's the, it's the daily thing, you know, it's, your choices every day make your career, essentially, I feel anyway. Of all the positions I've ever held, there's only been a few that I haven't been a supervisor or a lead in some way, shape or form, you know, and a lot of them, be, um, a lot of the uh, people told me this because of my attitude, because I have that can-do attitude. Um, and if you don't, then yeah, you you won't make her too far, <laughs> man. It's, it's, <clears throat> go out the day every morning and say, we can do this, we, we can do this, we will do this. And that's how you get it done. Um, if you're a naysayer and you think that way, if you talk down to yourself or, <clears throat> excuse me, you think negatively, you know, psychologically you're a negative person, then you'll pass that around. And that, that you won't get very far thinking that way, man. Um, so staying positive is the only way that I see. And I don't, I don't think there's any, for me, there's no other way to think anymore. I had to train myself to, to be positive and to think positively because there was a time where I'd beat myself up where I'd say, oh man, you should have did this or, you know, you were slow at this or you could have did that. But uh, it's important to learn, to to learn that mental capacity to, to have some of that emotional control, um, uh, emotional awareness to be able to process things and say, okay, well, you know, today was a bad day or this was bad about today, but that doesn't define my whole day. How much do I want to put into that negativity? Um, and I chose to put more into the positive. You know, you, you can go through things, you can see things, you can experience things, you can uh, have bad days, but you go through them. You never stay stuck in anything negative. You know, if you're gonna stay stuck in something, stay stuck in positivity. <laughs> you have to be able to do your job and still have a smile on your face because I've done several jobs, and if you're not if you're you're not positive, you don't have to be a leader. But if you're not positive about it, you're going to drag everybody down, and you'll drag yourself down, and you're, you'll get nowhere fast. You'll get nowhere with your crew. You'll get nowhere with your team. Um, you'll get nowhere with your job. You know, it's a quick way to end up in a dead end job that you hate, being miserable. And if that's the way people want to be, then they can be that way. But I've always found that it's better to just be positive about it, no matter what's going on. You still got to smile and say, "Hey, we can do this. We got this." You know. Keep that can-do attitude and not just keep the attitude, but you can do it, make it happen. There is no can, you just do, you know, you, you make it happen no matter what. And that's the attitude that I always see. Confident, I got faith, you know, I'm definitely confident in myself. Conceited, maybe a little bit, but hey, it's just, it fall, I fall back on confidence because I, I got to make it through today. You know, I always will. Um, and that's the day at work and that's the day with my coworkers, that's the day with my students, you know. So pass it on, it's, it's gonna be good, make it good.